G'day, it's Rodney from I Comply here and we're here with another episode of having a yarn on the farm and today we're having a yarn to a good friend of mine, a uh, large strawberry grower out here at Bells Creek in the sunny coast, uh, Di West from Suncoast Harvest. Uh, Di, good to see you. You're here too, Rodney. Um, I love coming out here and a couple of reasons I love coming out here is this is one of those farms that is uh, all girl power, uh, run by Di. Um, you know, you don't see you don't see a lot of farms nowadays uh, where the head of the operation is a woman. Um, Di, how have you how, how'd you end up farming, and uh, how long have you been farming out here at Bells Creek? Uh, I was born into slavery. I always tell people, born into farming. Um, we used to grow tobacco here at the Glasshouse Mountain, um, and before that, even down around um, Bonshaw in northern New South Wales and and western Queensland, and then we moved up here to Glasshouse and. Um, you know, it's such a perfect place on the Sunshine Coast and my father never wanted to move anywhere else. So, and the perfect place is and we've been growing vegetables and, and that here in this farm for about 30 years. Yeah, as, as, a, as a strawberry grower, you're, you'd what be considered a, a medium-sized enterprise in strawberries. Uh, how many million plants do, or how many plants do you grow? We've got nearly 900,000, so that's a medium-sized operation um, these days in strawberries. There's not a lot of farms our size, really. Well, they never used to be. I think they're becoming more popular now. I think people have to get bigger. And nine hundred thousand plants is a that's is a, a is a decent size. Uh, that's yeah. still pumping out probably close to a semi trailer a day. Yeah, 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 semi trailer a day. Of course, goes out of here. Yeah, so a semi is nothing to sneeze at. And uh, this year, uh, have you planted the same amount as you did last year? Because you know a lot of growers are growing a little bit less because of uh, because of COVID and. Uh, the problems with labour. Uh, did you plant the same amount of numbers? No, we, we thought about cutting back a bit and then we decided that we would go because we were pretty confident that we had enough people ourselves with our people that were already in the country last year that were staying. So we planted the um, the same amount and um, yeah, so, so far we've been planted. I think uh, when you talk about strawberry growers and you know people having problems with labour, yeah, you, you're, you're not having as much problem with labour and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that uh, Suncoast Harvest does have a reputation of paying uh, top dollar to their workers. Um, your worker retention seems to be very good and I think if anything COVID's taught us, um, the farmers that are looking after their workers a lot better aren't struggling as much as the farmers that aren't. Do you think that's a fair comment? Yeah, I think so. I think um, yeah, we look after our people too. I've, I've been born in farming and I've been a hard worker all my life, working out there doing this work. And uh, so I know how these people feel and the psychology of it and uh, how to get the best out of people. Because happy workers are the best workers and the most efficient. And uh, so we always pride ourselves on making sure that everyone gets motivated and happy and uh, keep them moving. I've, I've, I've often come out here and I've, I've seen the little things that, that you guys do as a small family farm. Um, you know, you come from a Maltese background and I've been out here when your dad's been handing out those pastizzis, are they? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Maltese pastizzis yeah. out to all the workers yeah. and oh, I've been block. ice yeah. blocks on a hot day, I've seen sausage sizzles happening here after work and I think that uh, these are the little things that you've got to do. You've got to go the extra mile now to look after your workers uh, so that they do come back and I think that uh, Suncoast Harvest is a testament of uh, probably at the forefront leading leading in regards to uh, to how you look after people. Yeah, and I think last year, you know, we've kind of really had to look at getting a lot more Australian workers too, and we thought, where are, where are the problems that we normally have, and you know, what, what do we see? So we've put strategies in place this year as well that have helped to attract and retain those Aussie workers. Uh, just babysitting them through, because all of us work on peace rate. If we if we paid hourly rate, our people wouldn't have any people there. These guys are earning $60 an hour, um, the top ones on peace rates. There's no way they're going to work for 24 51 an hour. So, you know, peace rates, everyone has negative things to say about You know, they're great. And it's, after three weeks, you're earning over $30 an hour. I think that's one of the biggest things no one understands at the moment is, um, you know, people are the first to bag peace rates. Um, if you ask anybody in the strawberry industry right now at the moment, what's the hardest roles to fill it's an hourly pay job because yeah. everybody is um, is making so much money on piece rates and to work in a pack shed or to uh, as a quality assurance or box boy or even a pork tractor operator or supervisor, um, you've actually got to pay more than the hourly wage now 
to compete with peace rates. And uh, yeah. whoever thought we'd see the day, the day when, when that would happen, Di? Everyone always wants an hourly rate job, and uh, these days it's the other way around. So, yeah, we, we just can't fill those hourly rate jobs. Uh, so we have to keep bringing in new people and training them for that. So, starting at six, six o'clock in the morning, finishing at two, um, working five days a week. Uh, what would the average picker at the back here? What, what, would you, what would your top bloke be earning and what would your average, average bloke be earning? Um, most of the pays um, for the top ones for the pickers are over $2,000 last week. Is that bad? Oh yeah, that, and that's only um, probably 40 hours work for them. Yeah, that's pretty good money. Uh, so we pay great money and we're not killing people to make it up work like you know, 120 hours. So, and packers, I've seen uh, one pace it this week is $3,000. $3,000 for yeah, a packer? That's a, I think they did about 55 hours. Now, so that's, good money. Yeah, that's good money. Yeah. 3000 3, bucks for packing, and they've worked, what, five days? Yeah, yeah, five days, 55 hours. 55 hours. So uh, I'm not a mathematician, but that's a, damn good, that's a damn good hourly rate, and that's damn good money. Yeah. Um, now, this year, you know, with problems in labour, yeah, Suncoast being such a progressive farm, you actually um, are giving a little bit of a bonus when they start out uh, with regards to their piece rates and yeah. what have you to help them. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we just take it upon ourselves. When you sign a piece rate contract, you normally just get paid by the kilo, but we also pay $10 an hour plus whatever you earn. So from experience, first day, most people will earn about $12 or $13. It takes a few weeks to learn what you can and can't pick. Like, you can't pick everything off the plant, there's all different colours. Mm. You need to know what you can and can't pick. But it takes a bit of time to get the confidence to know, leave that, take that, and you know, it takes a bit of time. So we, we've taken the negative thoughts, because people sit there going, oh my God, I'm only earning $3 an hour. You know, focus on that, and I take that away. I'm like, you're going to earn at least you know, $22 an hour on your first day, basically. So we just subsidise that first two weeks. So you subsidise the first couple of weeks until yeah. they get the hang of it. So until, until they're earning, you know. So you're giving them a top up so that, because yeah. I know myself, um, you know, they get that pay slip for the first week and then they're like, oh God, I'm, and, and they run. Yeah, yeah that's you know? it. So by, by subsidising yeah. that first two, two weeks and giving them that top up until they get to that competent level, have you found your retention much better because of that? 100%, yeah. 100% retention because we're doing that and you know that's I think all growers need to do that when I mean, you see horror stories of people earning three dollars an hour I don't know how that ever happens yeah I, I've so, got no idea how that there's happens no either. Like, I'm out here with my staff every day I know them all by name I look them in the eye and I spend all my days with them out here in the paddock so you know I, I couldn't look them in the eye if they were earning three dollars an hour that's horrible I don't know how people can do that or justify it at all but the, the, very, the very worst person I've had out here starting at at least ten dollars an hour and I've got subsidized them. Back to 20. Yeah. So, you know, and it's not hard to do that because the cost of hiring someone and putting them on, you know, it costs probably four or five hundred dollars to, to train someone. To train someone, yeah. On. So, you know, if you're losing that person after a day, you know, that's, that's a lot of money you're getting lost for admin. One, one of the biggest things I always say, Di, is growers have got a lot of things, but the one thing they don't have is time. And I think you've touched on something really important here. One thing they don't have is time, and it takes time to train somebody. So by you throwing an extra $10 an hour for the first couple of weeks, you're almost um, hedging your bets, making sure that the time you're investing is actually going to be rewarded so that they do stay. And I think, I think, I think it's a smart move. I mean, there's, there's options out there. There's the seasonal worker program. There's a specific labor scheme. What's your, what's your take on those schemes, guys? Uh, even at my size, I'm not big enough to be bothered with that stuff. There's a lot of work involved, a lot of costs, and I can't get that back. And that seems to be the biggest problem I found is the seasonal worker program and the Pacific Labor Scheme. Too onerous. They look good on paper, but are they geared towards the large farmer and not Only so much the, the big, small and medium farmer? Big corporate farms, yeah. That have you know all year round work too. We're a season that's about nine months in total, and, um, so, uh, and it's only six months before we have all the staff. I think it's just geared to be quiet. So that's not, that's not the answer for you, the seasonal worker or Pacific Labor Scheme. Backpackers are going home. Aussies, with all the incentives you're throwing in, you know, subsidising their, their training and everything, you know, harsh reality is that the Aussies don't want to do the work. Uh, when the days get tough, and it's okay now, I've got a lot of people from Victoria that are up here. It's great, it's quite, quite cool here. 
as soon as we hit September and the temperature's hit 30 degrees, those guys go. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that defies logic for me, Di, is you know our office is based in Caboolture and every second shop in Caboolture is a job active or job yeah, yeah, start. Yeah. Yet, you know, all the farms I'm talking to are saying we need workers, we need workers. Um, my office is across from Centrelink and uh, you know, I get so many people coming into the office wanting us to sign a form yeah. so they can keep getting their payments. And uh, <laughs> when we turn around and say to them, look, we'll do one better, we'll give you a job. Yeah. Um, oh, no, no, I don't want that. I just want you to sign the form. Yeah, um, the system's know. obviously broken. The system's broken, but you know, what? why are people they're just lacking in ambition that they're happy to sit on 300 bucks a week. I can't understand it myself. I need a lot more than 300 dollars a week just to eat. Oh, 100%. Get the car running and you know to pay the mortgage or the rent or whatever, you know. So I don't know What's your take on the egg visa, though? Oh, we, we just hurry up. Hurry up and get it sorted. Deliver some program that we can have some hope. Thing. I'm, I'm, you know, I've ordered my plants already for next year in the hope that that will come to fruition this season. They really need to be fast. And give us, give us something on the ground so we know what's going on. And I think that's one of the biggest problems, which a lot of people fail to realise. You've got to order your plants now yep. for next year. I've already ordered them and yep. paid, paid a deposit for my plants already. Okay, and as far as knowing whether or not you've got a workforce, um, it's a big gamble. It is a big punt. Yeah. So you've got to decide whether to plant the same, whether to plant less. Uh, you've got to pay for your plants, pay your deposit, um, and you've got no answers on an ag visa. You've got no answers. PLS is not applicable for you. Seasonal worker, yeah. not applicable for you. And you lose your deposit. Um, you lose your deposit if. Um, do you like to gamble? <laughs> well, take it down. Put it on black or put it on red at the casino. Maybe red, I suppose, being a strawberry farm. But yeah. Yep. But, uh, I don't gamble. <laughs> this is a gamble. This whole, this whole lifestyle is a gamble. Do I, why do you think? Obviously, the labour crisis is massive. Right? It's it's huge. Why do you think it's not getting the media exposure that it probably deserves? I think they just don't know why. I don't think people realise that we're just farmers. We're, we're all quite quiet with what we do. You know, we're not out there blowing our trumpet all the time. And I don't think they realise that we grow all the food that everyone eats. You know, that packet of whatever you know started here on a farm. Everything you eat in your fridge and your macas and everywhere, it all comes off the farm. Even your all your McDonald's. Yeah, correct. Everything comes off the farm. All that food made, in a, made there in a factory and, and handed to you, but it starts here. I personally believe that uh, one of the reasons we haven't got the exposure to die is farmers, they don't bitch and moan, they don't whinge and complain, they just get handed the cards that they've been dealt. So, you know, for you at the you moment, learn to deal with it, yeah. yeah, you learn to deal with it. If yeah. you don't have someone to road check, you go in and road check. Yeah. If you don't have someone to go in quality assurance today, yeah. you go in the shed and quality assurance. Yeah. If you haven't got a spray tractor operator to spray tonight, you'll jump in and spray. Yeah. You'll wear all those hats yeah. and you're so busy doing the job that you're actually not complaining about, about it because you're just trying to survive. I've got a time here. I work from, I'll get up at four o'clock, except for the weekend I get up at two o'clock. And, uh, and, and I'm often here till eight or nine o'clock before I get home. I don't, I don't live here, I live 50 k's away, so my day is long, the next eight weeks away. So you've got no time to complain about uh, what's going on, you've just no, got to... No, I'm flat out. Getting through well. What you can what you can do is, uh, do I wear, if someone wants to buy Suncoast Harvest strawberries, and uh, let me tell you, you want to buy Suncoast Harvest because they're absolutely beautiful. Um, you're packing a couple of brands. Tell us the brands and tell us where we can get them. Yeah, we have uh, Love Strawberries is our main brand that we do. Um, they're available all over, um, but we also we grow for Protection and Protection Fresh, so we pack under their Very Yummy label and um, Tasmania. Everywhere. everywhere. Sorry, you can't get them from there. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get them from Perfect. I think Perfection Supply, Woolworths and Coles. Yep. Um, you and can Aldi. Probably, and Aldi. We so do all the majors. There's a good and IGA. We, do, we supply everyone. So there's a good yeah. chance uh, you can get dyed strawberries from anywhere. And I've got I've got a refrigerated stall at the front of my farm here. Farm gate. Yeah. So if ever you want to come up to the farm, if you're local. You want to come up to the farm and see Di? She's got a farm gate here as well. She sells strawberries at the farms. Yeah. And you actually do farmers markets too farmers on the weekends, market, don't you? Yeah, the Kiwana Farmers Market and Noosa Farmers Market as well. Noosa Farmers Sunshine. Market, Kiwana Farmers yeah. Market, where you're up there with your husband Paulie, who yeah. uh, grows bananas as yeah. well. That's my day off Sunday. I was yeah. at the market up at 2 o'clock and do the market. So on so. Sundays on your day off, 
you get up at two o'clock and you go do the markets. Um, yeah, also, I guess that's a life of a farmer, right? <laughs> I'm, mar I'm married a banana farmer, so we have two farms, so we're like doubly stupid. <laughs> Well, Diane, we were both born into slavery. So into slavery. Yeah. Diane, I just want to say, look, I, I admire and respect you immensely for what you've done out here. I admire your forward thinking. I admire your progressiveness. But more importantly, I admire the most how you look after your people. You're a huge success story. And, uh, you know, we have a saying, the fish rots from the head. Well, actions also reflect leadership. That's and I it. think that, uh, you know, you only got to look at all these workers out here, how happy they are. And the reason why they're so happy is they've got a great boss. They're getting paid well, they're getting looked after, and uh, I wish there was more farms out there like you. If there was, um, no doubt horticulture wouldn't get the bad rap it sometimes does. No, look, we, we, people, without people, we just have plants in the ground. So it's not just these guys doing it, it's picking and that, you know, all the people here. I say it's like a clock, it's had so many moving, different moving parts, you know, they all seem irrelevant, but you take any one of them out and the whole thing stops functioning or not having any purpose. So that's what we're like, and everyone's important. Like a great team as well. When you look around, it's just, it's all happening. Like everyone yeah. knows their role and everyone's doing their job. Like you've got, he's carting fruit in. You've got a guy over there that's just spraying the crop that's just been picked. You've got the pickers out here all doing their job. It's just, everything's in sync. It's just, it's just happening. Yeah, I don't have to run around yelling and screaming and barking orders at people. Everyone knows what they're doing and they, and they get on with it and do it. And that's what I mean about having a good workplace culture. Yeah, so I think, I think it's these so These guys important. are intelligent people. They're, you know, they're not idiots. They're uh, really, they're not, you know, they're pretty intelligent roles and that's what, as a boss, you don't want to be heavy. Heavy-handed, heavy no. you need to be light. And, you know, they, well, like I said, I think, I think actions reflect leadership and I think you're a great leader, Di. Um, Di, thanks for having a yarn on the farm.